In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, good morning. Good morning. Christ is in our midst. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy name day to all the Johns, the Joannas. We celebrate today St. John the Baptist. It's called the Synaxis of St. John the Baptist because we give credit to John who participated in the baptism of our Lord, which we celebrated yesterday, one of the 12 great feasts. It was the 12th day of Christmas yesterday. Those are the 12 days. And so it starts with the beginning of when Christ is born into the world as a small babe wrapped in swaddling clothes to now Christ as an adult at the age of 30 coming perfect man and perfect God to wrap us in himself to give us the light and the joy of gladness, the Holy Spirit to give us the glory that was taken away from us when we fell from paradise. And he wants to bring us back into paradise. And we talked about how in that situation, how did Christ come? He didn't go into the glorious temple to reveal himself at the beginning of his ministry. He didn't go into the large city of Jerusalem. He didn't go to King Herod or any of the places that we think are magnificent and glorious but he went to the wilderness, the desert, the desert, because it's there that he wants to be with all of us, whatever is desert and wilderness in our lives. He wants to refresh us with those waters of the Jordan. He wants us to refresh us not only with those waters, but he wants those waters to turn into the Holy Spirit gushing up within you so that your whole life is paradise and no longer a wilderness. And John the Baptist is the one that we celebrate today who participated in that. Now what do we know? From Scripture, we know that even from his mother's womb, when he was in Elizabeth's womb, his mother's womb, as soon as Mary came to visit, he left for joy. He danced, if you will, in front of Christ himself, he was so ecstatic and happy because he was filled from the, with the Holy Spirit, God, from his mother's womb. He is, as Jesus said, no man greater, there is no man greater born of a woman than John the Baptist. Jesus himself said that. Filled with the Holy Spirit. He is the last and the greatest of all prophets. He comes even in a camel hair coat, reminding us of the prophet Elias, or Elijah, as he is known, and he, from his mother's womb, was filled with the Holy Spirit and danced. Danced for joy and proclaimed him. Then he is born. He is born six months before Jesus. This is now according to our oral history and some written history outside of Scripture, which you and I are blessed to know about because we are Orthodox Christians. And as Orthodox Christians, we go back to Christ and his apostles and everything that was there. And so we know from tradition, because people ask, what happened to John? Because we know that when all the babies were born around Jesus' time, all children two years and younger were slaughtered by Herod, right? John the Baptist was around the same age. John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus. What happened? Well, truly, Elizabeth had given birth to John. And his father was who? Anybody know? Zacharias. What was Zacharias? What was his position? He was a priest. Very good. He was a priest of the temple. And so everyone knew that Zacharias had a son because he himself being a priest of the temple, of course people are going to know. So what happened when all those soldiers sent by Herod went looking for all the children? What do you think they did? They went to the temple. And they were claimed, Zacharias, where is your son? And Jesus even talks about that in Scripture. Between the holy place and so forth. In the temple, right there at the temple, he refused to give up the location of his son. And Zacharias died for John the Baptist. And Jesus refers to it in Scripture. 
in a cryptic form. And we know the full story. Elizabeth runs to the desert. And at the desert, she is found to have found refuge. An angel helps her. And it is in the desert that we have come to understand through biblical archaeology and scholarship that they were the Essene community. And the Essene community in the desert were those who lived their faith with such purity and piety, they were like monastics, okay? Nazarites. So some were celibate, and some were married with children, and they all lived together in a very beautiful and holy way. And John the Baptist was raised there by his widow mother and was protected with, by the Essene community and grew in stature and wisdom and grace. And at the right time, God the Father, in some mysterious way through the Holy Spirit, as we heard the voice in the Gospel, says, He who sent me to go to the Jordan, God sent him to go to the Jordan, and to prepare the way of the Lord. When he first saw the Lord in the womb, he danced. Now he's preparing the way of the Lord. And he's not going to the temple. He's not going to Jerusalem. He's going into the wilderness to a river. And this river is special because this river throughout all of the history of the Jewish people was a river that helped cleanse Naaman of, 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 cleanse of leprosy, helped show us that the prophet Elisha was given double the grace from God above that Elijah had. And he split the river in two with the camel hair's coat that he had. Here it is at the river that he is preaching. And he is preaching and he is saying to you, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And all of you that want life but are obstructed by that life that paradise, come here and let me wash you and give you a new start. Because what is it that blocks us? You know, this is the beginning of a new year, and I always reflect upon how God's providence is truly amazing. He knows everything. We have our Feast of Christmas, we have the Feast of Theophany, and He knows that in our secular world or this world right now, we'll have January 1st, we'll have the beginning of the new year in between. And he knows that we're going to come to the end of a year and reflect, and we're going to come to the beginning of a new year and maybe bring out resolutions and try to change. And isn't it beautiful that the bookends or the two ends, the holy, holy holidays and feast days between what we celebrate as the new year, which was the circumcision of the Lord, where we circumcise our hearts, that he gives us this opportunity, he says, come, let me give you those waters. Let me refresh you. Let me wash away your sin. Let me give you everything that you need for life, for that which was dry and parched in you and that which is no longer satisfying in you can become satisfying and can become full of life. Let me give you forgiveness. And so John the Baptist is coming. And all the people that want to change go to the wilderness for better. And all the people that are willing to say, yes, it's, I'm not perfect and I've sinned, come to the wilderness. All the people that admit whatever has hurt them in their life come there all the people who can hear the conscience of God crying in their heart are there. I was saying that John the Baptist's voice, if anything, is the conscience of God's voice. The conscience that we all have and God's voice crying within, saying, I'm wrong, I've sinned, or this is not right, and it's unjust. John the Baptist is that. We know that because we saw how he spoke to Herod about how his life was. Some people are scared by John the Baptist. In fact, in preparing for this sermon, I was listening to another sermon by a fellow priest out in California, and he said, would you go to church with John the Baptist next to you? He's a little ferocious and scary, don't you think? Look at how he preached against Herod. 
He was like, nothing, let go. He was scary. And in fact, when you see the movies, Jesus of Nazareth and all of that, I mean, the camel hair coat, and then they make his hair all disheveled, and he's, all, and he's screaming. But this is the beautiful thing. That's only one part. One part. He is screaming out for justice and truth, which is what we all want. And when we come into the light of justice and truth, we all are accused, too. And others are accused, too. But remember, he's filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, we say, Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, presence in all places and filling all things, the treasury of my blessings and the giver of life, come and abide in me and cleanse me of every stain and save my soul. Jesus Christ calls the Holy Spirit the other advocate. Jesus Christ says, I'm your advocate. I'm here to save you, not to condemn you. I'm here to love you, not to hate you. I'm here to give you back heaven and to bring you with me. And he says, and I will give you another advocate, the Holy Spirit, who proceeds from the Father. So Jesus Christ is showing us how now the two come together. Yes, truth, but with mercy and grace. Yes, truth, but now our advocate which is why of all the places for God to send John the Baptist, he didn't send him as a Bible thumper in the corners of Jerusalem. He didn't send him into the courtyards of Herod's temple. He sent him into the wilderness by a river who's for people who say, wash me, cleanse me, forgive me, Refresh me. Give me new life. That's where God sent John the Baptist. He is all truth, but he brings us peace with God. And he lets us start over and over and change and grow with safety, security, and love. He is wise beyond all wisdom, he knows how the law comes all together, but it comes together at this river. Isn't that beautiful? Now get this. Here he is and he says, I am baptizing you with water for the forgiveness of sins, but there is someone greater and mightier than I that will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. I'm coming and I am being your counselor and I'm helping you and I'm taking you into the river. Wash. Be clean. But who will give you the Spirit inside and say that you are truly reconciled? God. God. And then this is the amazing thing. Of all the places for Jesus Christ to begin His ministry, not in all those places that I said before, in the wilderness, with the sinners who want to change, for a better life. Today, this church is the wilderness. That font right here, if you will, is the River Jordan. We had the waters blessed yesterday and the day before yesterday. There are bottles here waiting for you to fill with this holy water so that you can take this water and you can re drink this water, you can bless your homes with it, your cars, your workplaces, and to refresh yourselves and to know that you have something from God, tangible, to give you really what is the most important, that spiritual thing, those waters of baptism and grace and newness. This is for you. This is the wilderness, and we are with Jesus Christ, and we are awed with John the Baptist. Because John the Baptist following God's will, is baptizing. 
and he sees Jesus. He didn't know. He said in the Gospel, I didn't know who he was. Remember, Jesus and John the Baptist were separated. At six months, he left and went into the wilderness. I didn't know who he was. But he who sent me, God the Father, said, he who the Holy Spirit comes down and remains, he is the one. And so Jesus comes and the Holy Spirit is crying out within John, this is the Son of God. And John the Baptist is overwhelmed and amazed and he shrinks back and he says, I should be baptized by you and you ask me to, be, to baptize you? I should be baptized by you. You are God. And Jesus, think about it, Jesus now in the midst of all the sinners, and John recognizes him, in the midst of all the people, in the midst of you and me, in the middle of you and me, he says, no, John, let us fulfill all righteousness, for I must go into these waters that all the people are going into, and I must fill them with me. I must fill them with me so that when they go into the water, they get me, they receive me and the Holy Spirit. And so as soon as Jesus goes into those beautiful waters of the River Jordan, the heavens were torn open, which means for you and for me now, there's no more block from heaven. There's no more cherub standing there at attention at the Garden of Paradise. The heavens have been opened because of the humility of our own God who is with us and is willing to take upon himself what? Our sin. That's why in John it says, Behold the Lamb of God. The heavens are open for you and for me. Jesus goes into the water, comes out immediately because there's no sin. He fills the waters with his grace and the waters irrigate the whole planet and give blessings to the whole creation. And then for us who are of a free will, he says, come. And as the heavens opened up and the voice of God the Father said, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. And the Holy Spirit came down upon Jesus in the form of a dove. The same dove that came to Noah, if you will, the dove of reconciliation, of peace. The Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove and stayed on Jesus. And you and I who have now been baptized in Jesus Christ have the Holy Spirit to stay within us, the seal of the gift. And we need to do that again and again and again. And He blesses us and he blesses us and the whole year, and he blesses our homes and our families and so forth, and he gives us the water, and he said, continue to do this. And so we continue every year. The same prayers that were used at your baptism were used to, to bless this water, and more so. And the same John the Baptist who cries out in our consciences helps us to come into peace and say, let us continue and endeavor together to repent, to change, to keep growing in the love of God, to do it with great safety and security and strength, to become magnificent, to actualize our full potential. Let's see where God is taking us this year. Let us wash ourselves again and start anew. Let it be a blessed and new year. Let us be washed clean and let us allow God's light and then the Holy Spirit to keep gushing like rivers, rivers of water. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, God bless you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And happy name day to all the Johns and Joannas.